Right, so in the last video, we wired up this board and um, we put the we removed the supports from this uh, base and we put in the bolts. And now it's been uh, a good amount of time for these bolts to dry. The bolts are now dry, so the next thing we now have to do is to coat the boards with uh, the conformal coating that I talked about earlier in the last video. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up the software, the display software, on here um, and uh, I'll just use a laptop for that um, and I'll show you the process of loading the software onto there which will be uh, a basic um, uh, image which I've created to uh, which has all, which has the operating system and and then and then loads uh, the basic version of the, of the display software before I upgrade it so let's get on and uh, coat these boards and um, and get on with loading the software so we've got the card reader hooked up to the laptop, so let's load the software. I use an app called Belena Etcher, which is just a standard um, a Mac app for loading um, images onto SD cards. So I prepared a, um, an image here. I uh, worked on uh, for quite a while creating this uh, image, which I now just flash onto the card. So let's, um, let's get on and do that. The software is now loading onto the card, so um, Whilst that's in progress, that'll take um, probably a little while. Let's go and uh, cut these boards. So they are the boards coated. As you can see, when I coated the base of the Raspberry Pi, I was careful to avoid the SD card slot and the points that I solder to. So I solder to these points here, those points there, and those points there for power. Uh, the Arduino is fully coated, and so is the uh, power converter board. Um, and the software is now loaded onto the card and is validating. So the next step is to wire up the Raspberry Pi with the USB connector that we have here. Before we do that, we thread it through the base. Then we wire in the USB connections and power cables. And we are then ready to install the Raspberry Pi into the base and continue the um, stage one assembly. So now that the boards have, co have been coated and the coating is dry, I just want to test each of the boards and make sure that they work uh, before I continue with the assembly. So I've just got some basic power hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. Let's switch that on. And you can see straight away that it's powered on and with the graph, the flashing green light indicating um, disk activity. So it is booting uh, from the card and that works fine. The next thing I'm going to do is test the Arduino, just make sure that the basic program that comes loaded onto there works then i'm going to load some uh, firmware onto it uh, the tft dash firmware and to test the arduino i plug it into my laptop which gives it some power and as you can see that orange light there is flashing which indicates that the basic program that it comes preloaded with which i believe is a blink program is uh, working just fine so that arduino is good so what i'm going to do now is just load up the, the firmware so i'm just going to push some uh, the, the TFT dash firmware to the board and that's going to load the firmware and as you can see here the program's being loaded and being verified so that's now done and just to quickly test that the firmware is being loaded I can just call up the serial monitor and you can see now that the Arduino is outputting the basic string of data um, for displaying all of the bike's inputs and outputting those those inputs um, from the bike to the uh, TFT Dash software, which I'll explain a bit later on.
Okay, so that is the Raspberry Pi in. It is uh, screwed down into the base. As you saw, I fastened in the, uh, the USB connecting cable. So this USB connecting cable is used for software updates and for plugging in accessories like the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, that's been um, hot glued in place. You probably saw in uh, that I ran a, a test on this. So I plugged in this USB cable to a USB uh, device just to make sure that it's working okay before I then go and glue it down. Um, so then the other thing I did was power up the Raspberry Pi using these uh, these soldered cables just to make sure that it powers up with the cables instead of the connector because I don't use the connector here. So that is all in that's ready to be connected up. The next thing that's going to go in now, the Arduino is going to be uh, mounted onto the bike interface board which um, I assembled earlier and that's now going to be mounted in. The cables are going to be connected up for the USB um, connection here which provides power and data um, that connects the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino and then the cables for power are going to be connected together. You can see here I've got two thinner cables there for 5 volts they're going to be connected together for five volts. They're going to have another set of cables which are going to go out to the display, which is another five volt connection. And that's all going to be provided by this power converter here. And that's all going to go in now. So as you can see now, the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino board has been hooked up to the bike interface board, which we assembled in a previous video. The Arduino has been soldered. The cables that we earlier soldered onto the Raspberry Pi have been soldered onto the Arduino. They've been hot glued down for extra security, so they can't move or go anywhere. These are the USB cables. So what I haven't previously explained is that it's essentially a USB connection that's going between the US, the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. As I showed you earlier, there's a whole string of data coming on, uh, coming from the, the Arduino uh, with obviously the bike interface board connected, which outputs a huge stream of, of data, string of data. And it's, it's not huge. It's about it's under 250 bytes of data but it's outputting that stream of data multiple times every second 
to the Raspberry Pi, which is reading that stream of data. And this is being transmitted over a, a USB connection, which are what these four wires are I've just soldered are here. That's going to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is reading those the stream of data and it's then using the TFT Dash display software to display that information in a nice, pretty way on the screen, which I'm yet to mount. So the next thing that has to be mounted is the power supply, and that is this board right here, which I've already conformal coated. It takes an input voltage, which is 12 volts from your bike, it outputs 5 volts. It's capable of delivering 5 amps of power, which is way more than these boards and the, the screen will need. But the thicker cables coming from here are your 12 volts coming from the bike. The thinner cables are the 5 volt inputs to the boards. So I've got 5 volts here going to the Arduino board, 5 volts here going to the Raspberry Pi. There'll be another 5 volts that come out to the screen and that powers the display. Um, and it's uh, TFT control board. That will be coming next in the next video. So that'll be it for this video. It's been quite um, uh, a lot going on in this video already, just to get the boards mounted in the base, get everything glued down, uh, tested, and so forth. So uh, that is uh, another continuation of a stage one TFT dash. Download.